Hi everyone, and welcome to Vodcast 4.3 for AP Bio. We're going to look today at signal transduction. Uh, last Vodcast, we spent some time talking about the sort of introducing signal transduction and talking about sort of the different phases of signal transduction uh, in terms of you know reception, transduction, and response. And we talked a lot about the um, receptors and the ligands that are associated with signal transduction and cell communication. Today we're going to look a little bit more closely at the actual transduction phase of this in terms of um, the pathways involved and the types of cellular responses that those pathways can elicit. So our learning objectives for this one, uh, first we want to try and take a look at the role that the environment plays in eliciting a cellular response. So when we talk environment here, obviously we're talking sort of the um, extracellular environment, what's going on around the cell. We also are going to look at how these transduction pathways can be used to influence the cellular response when we get a change in environment. Okay, So we're going to start with two different cell responses here. First one we talked a little bit about the other day in class, and that is adrenaline. Right. So this is sort of that basic fight or flight response. Um, you've got some something that occurs that causes a this fight or flight response. The cell signaling that occurs, we get a release of adrenaline. And so adrenaline is the ligand in this case, and it's going to um, activate these receptors that are called beta androgenic receptors. So these are um, surface mounted, um, G protein coupled receptors on the surface of a cell. Now there's a few different things that happen here, but ultimately what happens is the activation of those receptors causes an increase in our cyclic AMP or CMP camp. And that in turn activates PKA. Now PKA is one of the kinases that we see in cell signaling. And it, what it does is it phosphorylates two enzymes. Um, and it will, and again, the key there is phosphorylates, right? So when we get cyclic AMP, which is a um, second messenger molecule, that second messenger molecule, what it does is it then in turn activates the PKA, which phosphorylates these two enzymes. And the phosphorylation of these enzymes um, will lead to a ready supply of glucose. And the way it does that is by breaking down um, glucagon, right? So glucagon is large storage molecule with a lot of glucose molecules linked together. So when we have this cellular signaling happening with adrenaline, we break down glucagon ultimately to create glucose to provide quick, ready energy available to cells in order to be able to uh, respond with that fight or flight response. We'll look at uh, a sort of visual representation of that here right now. So this epinephrine cell signaling or this adrenaline, um, we have the epinephrine is the ligand and so it binds with the receptor right here, okay? Um, and this receptor has this G coupled protein right here, this GDP, um, and what happens is when the adrenaline or the epinephrine binds with the receptor, that causes the um, activation of this by replacing GDP with GTP. Okay, GTP in turn activates by breaking off this particular subunit of this molecule. That in turn activates another membrane embedded protein right here, this um, ad adenyl cyclase, which catalyzes the formation of the cyclic AMP. So this is again, these pathways, right? We have, you know, the receptor binding that causes GDP to replace the GTP, which causes this subunit to move over. The subunit then activates this um, cyclase right here, which in turn catalyzes the formation of CAMP, cyclic AMP, from ATP. That then activates the PKA, 
okay, this kinase, which phosphorylate specific proteins, right, or these enzymes, which in turn leads to the breakdown of glycogen into glucose so that we can have uh, ready energy available. Okay, if we go back to our slide here for responses to cell signaling, another one we can talk about here is this cell growth. So growth factor is another ligand, okay? So in this case, we're talking about growth factor and we're talking about adrenaline. So in this case, the growth factor binds to these tyrosine kinases, okay? Um, these, again, now initiate one of these pathways. This happens to be, again, a G-coupled protein, okay? And in this case, it's one called RAS, which activates this MAP kinase pathway and that MAP kinase stimulates protein expression. That protein expression then leads to cell division. And so again, the idea here is that we can have different responses, right? The response in this case with the adrenaline is this supply of glucose. The response to our growth factors binding to these other receptors here is that we get an increase in cell division. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about another example of um, sort of environmental factors here. Okay, yeast cells. Um, they communicate using a signaling molecule that is called mating factor. And this is kind of cool because um, yeast are single cell organisms, but they survive or they are typically grow in colonies, right? So this mating factor will bind to cell surfaces receptors um, in other yeast cells that are nearby, right? When that happens, they stop their normal growth cycle and they initiate this phosphorylation cascade, right? So we see, again, one of these phosphorylation cascades in our signaling, um, and that includes these protein kinases and these GTP binding proteins. Um, that are similar to our G-coupled proteins that we talked about in uh, our early, earlier example, right? So again, this is the environment affecting the cellular response because in this case, you have an environment where you're getting um, a larger number of, um, you're, you're getting a large number of cells because the, um, cells are being induced to stop their normal growth cycle and the end result is that it actually then leads to further division of cells so that you get more of that same um, species in the colony there okay one last final thing to look at here and that is um, our single cell organisms with bacteria and again this is similar to what we just talked about with the yeast where we have these bacteria and density, population density, plays a role in response to cell signaling. So these bacteria produce these um, ligands called autoinducers. Okay. Now, autoinducers normally in low population, they diffuse away from the cell. That's that, no big deal. But what happens is when there is a higher density, these autoinducers diffuse away from the cell. They end up diffusing into a nearby bacterial cell, and they bind with the receptors that we see in those bacterial cells. As they bind with the receptors, they can bind to the DNA plasmid loop here, um, which will result in a change in gene expression. And in this case, it actually results in a gene expression, which uh, is responsible for the production of these autoinducers. Okay, the more the autoinducers are produced, the more they will diffuse across and bind with the um, receptors. The more they do that, the more that is produced. So you get this sort of like vicious cycle of more produces more produces more, and you get more and more released. And what this does is this signals to the um, bacteria that they are in a higher population density, which typically results in a slowed growth pattern 
because you are trying to the bacteria is trying to avoid having too rapid of a growth and using up all of its resources um, so it's sort of a way for single cell organisms to communicate with each other and keep the overall population growth from going completely out of control okay we can talk more about this in class um, i would encourage you to look through the reading in chapter nine uh, from your online textbook and uh, also to look at the topic questions in ap classroom bring any questions you have to class tomorrow and we'll talk about it there thank you